Welcome everybody, Pro Spot and Gamer, another course showcase of one of the courses I've designed. I've already done the Arenas of Sparta, hopefully you've had a go on that. This is going to be called the River of Leonardus, and I'll explain why in a minute. As you can see in front of you, it was a tropical um, theme, I think, to begin with. We got rid of everything. There was no, not one tree on this plot of land before we started. All we had was had some undulations and rise and falls of the land and then we had water running through it which formed basically quite a nice river through the middle of the of, of the plot of land ready for the river of Leonardus to be formed and the course to be moulded around it really so that's what we've done I've got Walter my brain Labrador sat right now by me now so apologies if he interferes in this video you can see we've got some civilization and development on this real estate here by the first hole um, and basically this course takes i'd say probably three four different sort of areas and themes in it and the first one obviously for the first three four holes is quite a lot of civilization quite a lot of buildings feels more manicured than the rest of the course in my opinion um, i'm not going to go playing any of it i'm just going to show you some of the some of the holes and zoom in on some of them and show you how you need to play them and my sort of what i was thinking when i designed it because tune gamer which is the um number two o o n gamer brian um is gonna do a let's play like he did on arenas as sparta for me and he's going to do a let's play on the course his real first impressions of it he's not seen any of this he's going to play it and give you his first impressions of the course and because he's on pc on steam he can do flyovers of each hole and you'll get a, a lot better feel of it in game because if i play test you won't i can't all i can do is the scout camera and the triangle button giving me where my ball's going to land you don't actually get a real feel of each hole so in PC you do get that feel, so he's going to do that, so look out for that very shortly, because I should be publishing this hopefully today, um, in a couple hours or so. So the first, you sort of, is really posh where you tee off, you've got a bit of an avenue and this cart path through here. You want to be sort of on the right side of this juniper tree, giving yourself a shot into this green fairly tough opening hole i would say there is some tough holes on this course we've tried to make it a little bit harder than arenas of sparta but not stupidly hard um main palette of trees we've got our maple juniper um crept maple which is the purple trees which is quite nice and oak obviously you've got to try and use the same selection of trees bushes etc to keep the memory down our objects memory is high on this one because we've got quite a lot of water animations in it which do make that one go up quite a lot we've got some water towers here as well we've also got some wind turbines later you'll see so that's the first hole second hole is a par three really elevated you've got a chance to win yourself a car as you can see it's suspended on a rock in the middle of the lake or river and it's a real tough second shot island green really small green no bunkers or anything but it's not going to be easy and when that wind blows it could be a real tricky one you'd be happy to get off there dry with a three out of four we've got some goats here grazing and drinking out of the water they are all horned up ready for a night out on the town they've been one there in in the shelter getting out the way they've had their viagra and they are horned right up rock solid right the third is one you do want to listen to me if you if you want to know how to play this is a monster hole it's 660 yards nearly you definitely don't want to drive on the right hand side here in that bunker or anywhere around here you are in trouble straight from the back you want to be Buy that free if you can around here somewhere even in these bunkers wouldn't be an absolute disaster there's no way you're getting over to the green from here you can see the green with those red maples and that in the distance you can see the two 
expensive dwellings up on the hill overlooking the third green. You then need to play across here to this large fairway plot missing obviously these trees and, and giving yourself a chance to play into a lovely looking green in here. I say there's some real estate there, they've spent some real money up there on that. Big green, but lots of levels to it and lots of danger around. Tough hole, like I say, the first three holes there, you'll be happy if you're still even power after them. The fourth, we start to move into the footholds now and the river starts to become a real feature. We've got some running water here, waterfall. Nice looking hole, again, it's a toughie though. Get it right and you could come off with a nice birdie. Get it wrong, you could be looking at five. More real estate. Got some horses up there, Shergar and the like. Fattening them up for the restaurants on the course, probably. Horse meat burger. The fifth, the signature hole of the course, and my favorite, up in the footholds now. Um, lots of running water, all running out of these logs into the rivers, running down into the main river of Leonardus. So the fifth's down through there, and the sixth. Sixth is a toughie, short iron off the tee, long, then a fairly long second shot into a really small green, just around the river there. Plenty of landing in front, if you get a coin bounce you could be okay. And then the seventh, more elevation shifts and changes. It's a short hole, back up over there. Nice little hole, nothing really too much in the way, it's just getting the right club with the wind and everything. Um, and then we move in through the foothold with a valley hole, number eight. Narrow fairway, got to get the drive right. But then we look at this lovely lagoon settling in amongst this real estate and it's a real picture this little section of the course so tough little shot down under there par four giving you a chance and then we've got a par three where we've got a little set if you want a cappuccino a mocha um a panini or the like bacon bap or whatever halfway on your round you can have it here horse meat burger there's some ducks in there that have been fattened up as well, so you might have a duck pancake or something if you're lucky. And this is over to a bit of a back cave, the ninth. Again, a tough one. You want to make sure you club. It's 230 yards, I think, across this ravine, this pot lagoon. There's a hawk flying across. You don't want to hit him square on the beak as you club up. And then you're in there. Um, tough little hole, but it's a chance if you get the shot right before you come to the 10th. And then the 10th, one of my favourites on the course, right on the corner of the, of the whole settlement. So par five, 500 yards. You want to make sure with your T position, you can go for it if you want. You've got big boards, you can drive around the corner and give yourself a chance of making the green in two. But if you get a slow or whatever and end up hitting this bank, you could run right down into this water, this trap and give you nothing really anywhere around there, even held up in here, you're going to struggle. So you play to the sort of the 10, chip down to this landing area and it gives you a nice little 100 yard chip into the, the green which is surrounded by these sunken junipers and bushes. It's a little, little, little um, not a tip because it's quite straightforward but obviously everything you plant you can raise and fall. So a lot of these are trees that I've sunk right in the ground so it's just the top bit showing and it. I think it's quite effective. I think it gives a nice little look and all around here in this little bit here. That's what we've done to give it that feel. You know, you've got a couple of maples in there, you've got some junipers, ferns. So that's that section of the course there, I think, in the foothold sort of ends. And then we come right out to the 11th now, which is more where we start 
meandering around the river of Leonardus, as you can see, looking from there across. 11th is ma mainly made up of oak trees, a bit of an avenue down through, and here is another choice, it's a par 5, you've got choice. Either play from there across to here, which gives you probably an easier shot under the green because you've got a nice bank around the back you can use as a backstop. Or you go to the right here and probably a harder landing area with lots of sand and also probably the narrower part of the green chipping in. Don't think you'll have a shot from there to the green. You might do if, you, if the wind's kind and you fancy taking a chance. That's up to you. So that's the 11th. The 12th is back across the river, really narrow landing green. Right at the front, it's all been shaved, so if you're, if you're short, you will roll back into that sand. Um, 13th, another nice, nice hole. Now, this is one that I think they're saying it's a par 5, but this is probably good. This is definitely going to be changed to a par 4. I don't know why it's given you a par 5 over there on the left because. It's quite a straightforward hole if you get good position off the tee. You're then playing across to a lower green, back across the river. Um, one of the easier holes on the course, I would say. And like I say, that will be changed. That will be a par four. But it's a nice set in there. 14th is one of my personal favourites because it gives you a chance. It's a par four. And you can hit the green in one if everything's kind and willing and the wind's in the right direction. Bit of draw on your drive. Use the slope of the land. It all slopes into the green. Hoping for a kind bounce because some of it could give you an unkind bounce there. Risk and reward again. Play safe if you want. Back up here. And pitch to the green or go for it and hope for a bit of luck. And you don't overshoot your load and end up in that drink. And then we come back across the 15th. We have linked all this up. I mean, yeah, you could argue where's the bridges and everything else, but if you were walking around this course, it's basically green to tea. They're all fairly close. So we have sort of done it as a proper course from that point of view. 15th, 200 yard par three, fairly straight. Again, undulation on the green, couple tiers on the green quite a raised green and you know a drop off all the way around it so it's going to be a tough to get down into if you miss the green and then the 16th is another risk and reward hole depending on where the wind's blowing and how big a balls you feel you've got for the drive you can go safe across here and land on this first section of the fairway but if you're feeling like you've got a bit in you, a bit of lead in your pencil and you feel like going right across here. That's about 300 to there, I think. There you are, you see it, 302 yards. The wind's behind you, you might just carry to this fairway. And if you can get it landing on, that, on the short stuff there, you will have a long shot into the green and a chance of an eagle. But it is quite a tight green. It's not the biggest green in the world. Lots of planting around it, rocks and the like. Down over the back, you're going to be in trouble. Don't know if you would have a shot out of there, but you wouldn't want to be down there, that's for sure. Nice, basically, an end of the river. It comes through here, flows through under those stones and comes out here. Nice hole, that 16th. And look at it now. Now, now I'd say we're just now coming back into the sort of the settlement of it. So we've gone through the sort of the river stage and now we're coming back round to the final couple holes which are back in civilization again really so 17th won't be a this will be a par three as well so it will be downgraded to a par, um, par 70 this is 250 yards downhill it shouldn't be a par four up there it says it is i don't know why really tough hole i would say this is probably in the top one of the three toughest holes on the course really um, on the index, it, stroke index, it would be tiny green, two tiered, pin on the back tier, danger all around. If you miss that sort of catchment area, you're going to be chipping over that rock with water behind. You know, nothing, nothing but a shot on the green or landing on this front edge here is any good, really. You'd be delighted to walk off there with a three, I reckon. 
Cow's, cow farms there, ready, fattening up for the burgers and everything. Again, we've got them there. Nice herd of cows. Frisians, I think, black and white, usually. And we've got the 18th. Got another little development here with some tennis court and a few little shacks and all. Here we've got some golf carts and one thing or another. So the 18th brings you home, lovely hole. Again, pick your club off the tee wisely because it's all about where you're gonna land. Give yourself a shot in. If you wanted to land short, you would have a shot in there, look. If you wanted to go for this bit, you'd have a shot in from there. Go too far and you'd definitely be in trouble because there's water down here and the trees and one thing or another. So it's all about position off the tee. It's not about power and driving there. And then you've got a lovely shot into this really nice framed final hole with the, with the grandstands all around it. Um, lovely way to welcome you back. A little water feature in the in the lake there as well. And that you bring you in. And that concludes really the showcase of this course. And there it is. About 55, 60 hours I think we've spent on this one. Hope you enjoy it. And don't forget to check out Toon Gamers review on it. It will be going live very soon. Thank you very much. Pro Spartan out.